Right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa and polit politics. It is uh, what we will be discussing specifically the APC, its um, convention, and specifically a group of um, young people within the Rolling All Progressives Congress. You know, once the Kataka Committee led by Governor Maimala Boni. Uh, to reside. Uh, we have joining us on the show this morning, Prince Mustafa Aldo. He is uh, a former governorship aspirant uh, in Kogi State. Uh, good morning to you, Prince Aldo. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much. All right, from what we understand, uh, your group specifically wants uh, nothing to do with uh, if I have to put it out with me, Malaboni, you want him to step aside because of some of the issues uh, going on at the APC, specifically not holding congresses. Can you just uh, throw more light on that? Um, thank you very much. Um, glad to be here this morning. Uh, actually, it's not that we want him to step aside. We've actually sacked him and we have dissolved the CCPC, which is the caretaker committee. Um, when we did this in Kaduna on Saturday, uh, the governors, and we picked a date for our convention, we're going ahead to do the APC convention at the Eagle Square in February next year. As we did that, 24 hours later, all the governors of the APC met up in Abuja and decided to pick the same February that we had picked so that they can, uh, you know, try and in an attempt to deceive us. But um, what we what we have decided, we've had our own emergency meet, meeting as young. All right, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We we'll just people and with by Mr. We'll President. Yeah, go ahead. We lost you uh, in a bit. Uh, we could not really get uh, most of what you said. Can you just uh, go back or go through what you said again? At some point, we okay. had some sort of the, uh, disconnection. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'll go again. Yeah. So basically, what are basically you um, our group, the Progressive Youth, the Progressive Youth Movement, has dissolved the Memalabuni uh, Committee, which is the CECPC. Um, we've act All right, uh, Messi, we, seems that we seem to be having some issues and connecting with um, Prince um, Mustafa out of the day. And uh, the APC has actually been um, embroiled with lots of um, issues concerning this uh, non, uh, you know, uh, holding of um, the uh, convention. And a lot of people seem to think that uh, me, Malabuni, is not um, capable of um, handling the affairs of the, C the CEPC. Well, if you, if you look at the issue, I'm, I'm hoping that we're able to get, you know, connection with him so we can answer some of the questions, uh, you know, on board. But I, I think we do have um, uh, Mustafa Audu. Hello, yes. Mustafa. All right. It's good I'm to here. Hear. I can hear you clearly. All right. So we apologize for all of the disconnection and connection. But however, we hope that this would be sustainable. Uh, let's go ahead sharing your thoughts. What are the concerns of your group? Uh, we're, we're sure that they are not going to conduct the convention in February. Um, the reason why they have picked February is because we decided to pick February for our convention. So as soon as we did that, 24 hours later, all the governors met up and went to Mr. President and said they wanted the convention for February. I believe this is an attempt to silence young people in the party. And we honestly believe that they have no intention to conduct this convention in February. Therefore, we're going ahead to conduct our own convention. Next week, we'll be naming our own CECPC, who will bring out the zoning formula and begin to a process of carrying out the convention to make sure that the party heals. We do not believe that the current caretaker committee has the capacity to carry out the convention. Therefore, they have been dissolved. Okay, so um, I w would like to get some clarity. I mean, uh, you saying you are going ahead and they are going ahead. It feels like uh, there's no uniformity sort of at this point in time. Uh, who is the there and who is the we? <laughs> uh, to be honest, we're one. Are you speaking for the party as a whole or you're speaking as another faction of the All Progressive Congress. One party is Davis, therefore, and they have been dissolved. Therefore, we will be carrying out the convention in February at Eagle Square. 
No, but but yeah. how how constitutional, how legal is it if you went ahead to conduct your own um, parallel, you know, uh, Congress as it were? Wouldn't it be creating more tension and more issues for the all progressives Congress APC? Um, to be honest, uh, you can't make uh, scrambled eggs without breaking a few eggs. Okay. That's the truth. There are issues in the APC right now, and we do not believe that the governors have communicated these issues to Mr. President. The only way that we will not go ahead with the convention if young people have a dialogue with Mr. President. Nigeria right now is going through issues. You can see the insecurity. Three days in a row on the Kaduna um, Abuja Expressway, there have been killings, insecurity, kidnapping, murder. It's very unfortunate. So these are the problems, and all these problems stem from leadership issues. Without young people getting involved, these are young people committing these crimes. These are young people that should be engaged in more productive means. But unfortunately, this is the reality we're facing today. And it's simple. The reason why is because there are no young people in leadership position. So until young people get up and start representing the majority stakeholders of Nigeria, there will continue to be an issue. If you look at the APC, the APC in the day, Problems in the APC is indicative of the problems in Nigeria. So until we fix our party, we're going to keep having these issues. So we do not believe that the governors have the best interest of the party at heart. So as young people, where do we stand? We are tired of electioneering. We're tired of doing all the work and being left on the side. It is impossible for us to continue this way. No country in the world can function without a productive young population. Nigeria has the largest young population in Africa and the largest black populous uh, nation in the world. Therefore, if you do not engage these youths, like they say, an idle hand is the devil's workshop. Our youths are not being engaged creatively and positively, simply because the people in power do not understand, are too old to understand what is going on with young people. There are not enough young stakeholders in the party. There are not enough young stakeholders in governance. Therefore, if you continue like this, there will keep being a problem. And Mr. President has challenged us to do this. This, what we are doing, is a direct instruction from Mr. President. He told us in January, we cannot expect things to be done different. We cannot expect things a different result if we continue to do things the same way. Therefore, we must do things differently. If young people are not engaged in governance, there are only two people that can solve Nigeria's problems today. Number one is Mr. President, and number two are the young people. It is time for young people and Mr. President to dialogue. Therefore, we as young stakeholders of the APC will not stand down until we dialogue with Mr. President because the right message, the right problems that are going on in Nigeria are not being communicated to Mr. President because we know he has the interest of the country at heart. So, so are you saying, um, um, shortly, I'm um, sorry, just as a follow-up to that, are you saying that the president uh, has mandated you as a group to go ahead, you know, to uh, further divide the party? No. In January, Mr. President asked to see young people. There were seven young people that went there to the presidential villa to see Mr. President. And we were part of the team. Now, what Mr. President told us is that as young people, he wants us to be involved in governance. He doesn't envisage a country where young people are not involved. That's why he went ahead and signed the Not Too Young to Run bill. He is now charging us to go ahead and make a difference in the country. You see a problem, you fix the problem. How we do it is up to us. We have to come up with creative means of changing the narrative. We are tired of complaining in this country. And I tell you how we've changed the narrative. On Saturday, we went to Kaduna and we had an event. And at that event, at the Progressive Youth Movement event, we dismissed the caretaker committee the CECPC, we said we would do our convention in February. And 24 hours later, the governors met up in Abuja and went to Mr. President and said they would do the APC convention in February. That shows you the power of the youth. 
if the youth come together, if we believe in each other, if we work hard together, we can change the narrative because every problem in Nigeria stems from neglect of the youth, which is poor leadership. There are not enough stakeholders involved in leading the country. And if you do not understand it, let me put it in context. Where do young people flourish? FinTech, for example, Flutterwave, look at them. They're one of the top co uh, companies in the world. If you see healthcare, if you see entertainment, if you see the movie, industry, anything you see young people involved. But in politics and leadership, young people are only involved in the electioneering, in counting the votes, in being INEC, in being the security forces, in being everything except in leadership. Oh Young man. people have never come together to say, these are the representatives we want to represent us. This is the social contract between us and our leaders. This Prince is what Ali. we expect. Prince and Ali. this is the thing that we are let me, doing. Let me sort of get a bit of clarity right now. If I understood you correctly, all of um, this issue and asking um, the, the, the chairman of your CPC to actually uh, step aside is because um, they are not really carrying the interest of the young people at heart, in as much as you've uh, said that you had a meeting with the uh, the president, and he has asked that the young people not to do things the same way that they should get more involved in the party. Are you saying right now, if I understood you correctly, that the president, that's uh, Mohammed Buhari, and uh, maybe the party or the leadership of um, the party uh, are seemingly working in cross purposes? He believes in the young people, and the party, the APC, that these are not really young people friendly. What I'm saying in particular is that the APC was forged from a need to get rid of the rot and disease in Nigeria. In 2015, we believed in one man. One man had the interest. Every single, almost every single well-meaning Nigerian rallied around the poor man, the rich, the middle class. They sent the little they had to bring in President Muhammad Buhari. Now, since the APC has come into power and the APC has assumed office, President Muhammadu Buhari has taken steps to ensure that the country is on the right path. But unfortunately, a lot of people around Mr. President, a lot of people in the party, a lot of leaders have unfortunately used these opportunities, these leadership positions for selfish benefits, leaving the young people nowhere, leaving the common Nigerians nowhere, we are tired of complaining. We are tired of saying there is a problem. This is an attempt. NSAS, for example, shows you that there was something bubbling up. Unfortunately, it went the wrong way. Completely, it went the wrong way. There was no leadership. There was nothing at the end that made sense about it. Initially, it was a cause. Simply because there was no leadership. What young people should do, not should have done, what we should do now, is come together, understand the power of our numbers. There's a new APC register. There are 40 million new voters, of which 35 million of those voters are below the age of 45. What does that tell you? That tells you that the power is in our hands. Therefore, as young people, if we want to make a difference, why are there no junior ministers below the age of 45? This is what we want. We want critical positions in the APC. We do not want youth leader. How can one position, women leader, represent the entire women in Nigeria? How does that work? It does not work. It is not an inclusive process. So what we are saying is that we want positions such as secretary, organizing secretary, auditor, treasurer, things that have value. All the deputy positions and vice positions in the party should go to people below the age of 45. For example, Minister of Technology, Science and Technology should be a young person. Minister of Information, Culture should be a young person. Orientation agencies should be young people because we understand what is going on in Nigeria. We understand today's world. We are today's stakeholders. But we are not involved in the process. Therefore, there is a complete disconnect between our leaders and the followers. This is what is bubbling up around Nigeria. But no one can fix this problem except ourselves. I'd like to ask, I'd also like to ask you, Mr. Farah Audu, um, 
how would you describe the process that you have, you know, taken to dismiss the Buni uh, Kateka committee or the committee uh, that's been led by him? How would you describe it? Do you think that you have done it according to the books? I mean, uh, you know, what the uh, constitution or the laws that guide the party uh, says or stipulate? Um, we can take it one step at a time. I've read my constitution back to front. There is no such thing as the CECPC. Caretaker Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee is a foreign term to the constitution of the APC. If we are going face value, Article 17 of our lovely, beautiful, wonderful constitution states that no of the first, uh, subsection one states that the Nigerian constitution is supreme. It further goes to elaborate that a sitting governor cannot hold another executive position concurrently. Likewise, the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria states that a sitting governor cannot hold another executive position. I am a stakeholder in the APC. Amongst the majority stakeholder, it is my duty, it is my fiduciary duty to stand up for what is right for my party and my country. These things are at odds with my belief. What is currently going on? Therefore, there is a lot of issues in the party and in the country. So we must stand up. So before we look at what gives us the constitutional right, what gives them the constitutional right? Yes, NEC was constituted to give them six months. But after that, has anything been constituted? Even if there was a further extension by six months, that's one year. We have done over 18 months in a task that was given six months. Therefore, it is, it, <laughs> it is wrong of me so as a if citizen. I, if, I, if I have to um, infer uh, from all that you have said, uh, the, your grounds really with um, me, Malabuni, and um, his um, committee is not holding, not convening uh, these congresses in the time that he had actually been uh, uh, at the hems of affairs. Could it also uh, be stemmed to Absolutely. some of the issues um, in some other state um, uh, in the APC? Uh, you, you can see there are a lot of young, wonderful people in the APC, a lot of talented politicians all across the country. But unfortunately, we're bringing in people from other parties to cause chaos and disaster in our party. And this has shown up all over the country. You can see Zamfara as a case study. You know, you can see from one part, if you bring a governor to a party, it makes sense to bring this, uh, to give him the structure. But what about the people that were in the party before? What about the people that have been maintaining the structure over the years? So imposition does not work. What we expect is dialogue. What we expect is understanding. What we expect is genuine leadership. And if that cannot be provided, then step aside. Anambra is another case study. We have to be honest as Nigerians. Anambra, the APC produced three, over 350,000 votes for our primaries. On the one hand, let us assume that figure is real. So are you telling me that the APC can muster over 50,000 votes more than the entire Anambra state general election to fight each other, yet we cannot produce 40, over 40,000 votes or a little over 40,000 votes to vote for our own candidate? Then if, on the other hand, the numbers were not real, then are we being honest to ourselves? This is the issue. So as stakeholders, we cannot sit down and fold our hands. We must sit with Mr. President because we know that he has the best interest of the country at heart. And I'll tell you another reason. The day Mr. President signed the Not Too Young to Run bill, he believed that young people were capable to run the country. But do you know what the governors and the party chairman did? They increased the price of presidential ticket from 5 million to 50 million. The price of governorship ticket from 2.5 million to 22.5 million. The price of Senate ticket, House of Reps, House of Assembly all went through the roof. Why? To disenfranchise young people. Simply because they know that that is our weakness, finance. This is why we must bind together. This is why we must come together and stand up for each other now, because we understand 
I'm a politician, I'm a young politician, and I've run for office. Therefore, I know the most important part of electioneering. It is not getting your PVC and going to vote. It's like going to a supermarket. It is what you see on the shelves that you can buy on election day. So if the right products are not on the shelf, on election day, you cannot buy the right product. Therefore, the critical part of politics and electioneering in Nigeria is in the political parties. And if we're being real, if we're being honest with ourselves, there are only two major national political parties in this country, the APC and the PDP. We are of the APC. We believe in the APC. We believe in President Muhammad Buhari. But there are many things, many people, many aliens that have come to our party and tried to change the ideology. So we are not going to throw away the baby with the bathwater. We are going to rescue our party. And the reason why the APC is going to win the next general election, I'll tell you why. Because the APC, for the first time, is going to produce new young faces that Nigerians can relate to. Meanwhile, the PDP is going to recycle the same people that we've seen. This is why the APC is going to win. And this is the process that begins that. Okay, so, um, uh, you know, categorically tell us uh, uh, the motive. I mean, what's the reason for uh, doing what you're doing now, uh, the all-progressive youth, the youth wing of, uh, you know, the party, and uh, what you hope to actually achieve at the end of the day, and how you hope to achieve all of this? Um, it's very simple. We must be carried along. We no longer want the position of youth leader and women leader. There are 27 critical positions in the party. We know that experience and stability is a critical part of leadership. Also, youthful exuberance and the ability to dare is also another critical part of leadership. Therefore, we must blend the two. 15 of these positions can go to our leaders and our elders in the party. 12 of these positions must come to young people, to per geopolitical zone. In addition to that, all junior ministers must go to people below the age of 45. Critical positions, critical ministries must go to young people. These are the things we are fighting for. Nigerians, I believe both of you in the studio can relate to our fight. You can relate to what we are saying. We don't want to keep changing parties over and over again. We don't want to keep saying third force. It doesn't exist. The third force are the young people. We are already here. So let the young people actually take over the political parties. I challenge every single young person listening to this in every other political party. Take over your political party. You make up the numbers. If you take over your party, you produce people that the country can be proud of, people that are nationalists, people that are patriots. This is what Nigeria lacks, patriotic Nigerians. If you look all over the world, Nigerians are flourishing, except in Nigeria. Why? Because young people, the good people, are not involved in leadership. The others have made it so unattractive. So the good people say, well, politics is a dirty game, so I'll just leave it for them. Leave it for who? Politics is actually the most important part of your life, of our collective existence. So that is where we should focus on. So you, as the fourth estate, as the media, it is your fiduciary duty to this country to show young people the way, project other young people that are trying to lead us out of this darkness, not young people that are selected to represent certain interests, young people that young people can come together and know that they feel the pains of other Nigerians. They are willing to say the truth and they are willing to walk hand in hand. Everybody still loves the APC. That is why people are disgruntled and unhappy. You are only unhappy with somebody you love. If you don't care about somebody, then you will throw the person aside. But if you genuinely love somebody, then you will be angry with the person if the person is not doing what you expect. That is why, as young people, we must regain this trust that Nigerians have given to us, especially to President Muhammadu Buhari, who I know, I know categorically has the best interest of Nigerians at heart. 
Everything he has tried to do, there have been forces that have been working against him. He has tried judicial autonomy. He has tried local government autonomy. He has tried to free young people. Every single time there's a roadblock, second Niger bridge, look at the total number of investment. People try to paint him a different, a dif a different picture. But there are two ministers, the only state in Nigeria with two ministers in that is Anambra. Therefore, as young people, he has charged us. So how do, you, how do you intend to achieve, you know, you have actually mentioned that, um, I mean, if we actually are in tune, you're saying that the fact that young people are not being carried along in the party is the reason for uh, this uh, movement that you have. So you have the all progressive uh, youth uh, saying we are tired of the fact that we're not carried along. Now, the Absolutely. question is, uh, you want inclusion in at all levels of governance and including uh, the party level. So uh, how do you intend to achieve this? What are you going to do to achieve this goal? Uh, to be honest, um, we're going to take our demands to the president. We're going to keep going until we have a dialogue with Mr. President. We do not believe that the meeting with the president, between Mr. President and the governors, conveyed the true picture of what is going on, simply because we were not there. If you look at history, you use history to judge. And this committee was given six months, they failed. Given another six months, they failed. Another six months, they failed. Then another two, three months, it doesn't work. Why would you pick February when young people pick February? To try to undermine us. To try to say, okay, we've given you what you need, February convention, right? But I bet you January 31st, they will come up with a story saying, oops, problems we have to do it in may therefore we know that we do not trust anybody except mr president therefore we are going with our convention until mr president tells us that yes he understands there are problems in this party yes as young people these are the positions reserved for you no other person over this age will be allowed to contest in the party. And between young people, bring the best of your best to represent you, to show you what you have. Just like the best of our best represents each of us in different fields. The best in our technological field is representing us. The best in entertainment is representing us. Therefore, the best in leadership should truly represent us. As young people, go and bring your best. And we amongst ourselves will deliberate and produce the best. And we will have a social contract with the people. And we are, they are deliverables, things that are expected. This is how we are going to resolve this. Until these 12 positions are given to us, guaranteed by Mr. President, we will go ahead and conduct our convention and we will head to court. Let the court, I believe in the judiciary system, let the court in Nigeria determine, all the way to Supreme Court, determine who the legitimate NWC is. And we take it from there because we know that there is no, nothing that we've seen so far that shows that anybody is serious towards developing young people in this party and in this country. That is why we're idle. That is why we're not doing anything. That is why there's so much crime. The insecurity is not being carried out by old men. It is being carried out by young people. The election violence, all the things we hate, the 419, the, the fraud stars online, all the people EFCC are catching, doing all these basic financial fraud, are young people. And the reason they are doing that is because there's nothing for them to do. You know, that's the issue. How can we come 74th in the Olympics and, and, and we say we're happy because we're 13th place. This is the best we've done in 13 years. Nigeria should be number one in so many things. So it is because there are not enough stakeholders that understand the need. There is a disconnect. I'm not saying that do away with the older generation no but if you infuse enough young people then the problems can begin to change because we understand this world we understand the problems going on and we know how to fix these problems therefore if you involve us we would involve more young people so mm -hmm. more young people are doing constructive things right, it is difficult for a young person today please go on all right in would you say one of the reasons why the 
older generation who um, actually uh, control uh, the hems of affairs of the APC uh, is not carrying uh, young people along is because they do not believe in the capacity or in the ability that they can actually uh, bring in the changes that Nigeria and Nigerians uh, are demanding to see. On the contrary, I think they know full well our capacity. And I think they know that's why they use us. They keep us illiterate, they keep us hungry, they keep us poor, they keep us dependent because they know that with that little bit of independence, the Nigerian youth is the most ingenious person on the planet. I truly believe that Nigeria is the greatest country in the world. In all honesty, I know this is the greatest country on the planet, but we are a giant on our knees while on our bellies were crawling. Only young people can get us out of this mess. I'll give you an example today, right? Uh, just a practical example so you maybe the audience can understand what I'm trying to say. If you look at the Super Eagles, we were heroes in the 90s. And today we are not even anything to contend with. I'll tell you why. Back in the day, young people, you could do street football, you could play. Kanu Wanko, JG or Kocha, they were dribbling people on the street. They'd see you, spot you, and then, you know, you don't need any connection. You know, your talent is enough to speak for you. And you make it to the team. Some do, but most in general did not need to. So you make it to the team and you're grown from there. But today, football is engineering. Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, the best players in the world were engineered from eight years old. Therefore, they are the best. But where are our engineering centers here? Where are our training academies? Where is anything? Between any city to any other city is thick forest. And what exists there? People. What do they do if they cannot survive? They turn to crime. This should be our training institutions. This should be, we should be producing Anthony Joshua's every day. We should be producing Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo. We should be producing these top athletes, Serena Williams. We should be producing them every day. Because we have the people. How much are these training institutions? But I bet you the president has put in the budget over and over and over again. But those saddled with the responsibility to carry them out, we all know. You don't have to take my word. Come and show it to us. With the tremendous amount of resources that have been dedicated to these things, where are they? So there are no opportunities for young people to engineer themselves. If you see an entertainer today that has made it, go and ask him his challenges and his struggles to get studio time, to get to be able to make music, to be able to distribute. Why isn't there? All right, all right. I, I, I think um, I think that that point, you know, your point has actually been, you know, driven. Uh, the fact that you're saying that oh, there's no inclusion and uh, the underperformance that we're experiencing in our country can be tied down to the fact that youth are not being carried along. But we have Absolutely. seen governors who are young people uh, who are not really doing really great. Because if you want to look at the age, I don't know if we should be having this argument about whether uh, its performance should be about young or old. I'm thinking that performance should be about, you know, um, quality and personality much more than, you know, whether it's old or young, because uh, you could also have young persons who are, would underperform and who would not do different from what the older persons are doing. But let's get to uh, some concerns uh, that members of your group have actually raised. Now, in your group, some other persons are saying that uh, it's okay that they're, they're willing to right the wrongs of Governor Buni and uh, as long as he can resign as the uh, Keteka committee chairman. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, to be honest, from our perspective, he is no longer the Keteka chairman. He does not exist as the chairman to us. His Excellency Meymar Buni is honestly the executive governor of Yobe State to us, and that's how we view him. We will be naming a new caretaker executive com uh, convention planning committee next week. We will be bringing out our zoning formula the week after. We know, I, I bet you, take it from us, we know that there will be no convention held in February until Mr. President assures us. Because 
we know that if Mr. President assures us he has empowered us to be an integral part of the planning, when has the planning occurred? Where have they sat down? Where have the stakeholders come together? It's almost December. How is this going to happen? Out of 36 states that are supposed to produce 36 chairmen, I believe I'm hearing in some quarters that there are over 90 chairmen. How can you resolve this before a February convention without meetings and stakeholders meeting and hugging and reconciling? How is it possible? So the genuine steps that are needed for reconciliation are not being taken. Therefore, we know as young people that they've bamboozled boozled us already. Fool me once, shame on, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Therefore, we're not going to be fooled three times, four times. No, 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 no. We will do our own convention. We will name our own CPC. We will name our own zoning formula. And I bet you, because we name February, they name February. The moment we name our zoning formula, they will bring out their own zoning formula. The moment we begin to try and book the Eagle Square, they will try and block the Eagle Square. But even if it means that anywhere in the, in the country, in Abuja, in FCT, that we have to get a good location to do it, we will do it. INEC will be there. We will bring all the aggrieved members together and hold this convention. We will head to court until we have a dialogue with Mr. President. We are not interested in sitting because we've been approached by various governors. We've been approached by various factions. We are not in interested. All we are interested in is sitting down with Mr. President because that is the person that we trust. That is the person that gave us our mandate. That is the person that we believe because if you are not in the grand scheme of things, you would not know what is going on. So we know what is truly going on. We know that he's not receiving the right information. We know so, so he loves So let's talk about the goal. crisis. Now, we have reported that there are crises in about 12 states, uh, you know, of the Federation. I mean, talking about the APC. Could it be that this crisis is as a result of uh, the non-involvement of youth or youth are not being carried along? Could that also be the issue with all of this crisis that's brewing in the party? See, if, if young people were being carried along... Are you like saying that young, that's the issue across 12 states? No, that, that's, that's part of the issues. Part of the issues is not dialoguing. Part of the issues is not, is, is not having empathy. Part of the issues is not including young people, not giving us real roles and real positions. So when you bring in positions, when you bring people into the party, and you sever the existing structure, and you impose a new structure, you're going to have problems. So what, no what, what is really wrong then? No with all of this? What are the issues then in these states? Uh, you know, at the party, uh, the different states, about 12 of them, uh, the party issues that are going on. You're a, a, party, a member of this party, so I'm uh, sure you have an I'm idea. I'm a member of the party. Different states have their peculiar issues. Um, you have Zamfara, uh, you have uh, Oshu, you have uh, different, again, depends on where you are. You know, that's where the problem occurs. And each problem is unique to its location. But I tell you what is the all encompassing leadership, the ability to keep to your word. If the CECPC had said that they were going to do it in six months and they did it in seven months, no one would be upset. If they had done it in five months or four months, the whole country would have been impressed. But in 18 months, they've conducted congresses, which was never their responsibility. They've carried out elections, which was never their responsibility. They've carried out everything except what their name suggests. Therefore, from face value, it shows people that are not genuine in their intention. But if you delve in deeper, you now see the inclusion of people from other parties that don't actually bring value to us. As young people, we have sacrificed. As APC members, as APC stakeholders, all over, young or old, we've sacrificed, we believe, as businessmen. But yet the people coming are not the people who gave this sacrifice. So if you don't work for something, you don't understand the value of it. This is what is bubbling up around the country. The people that haven't worked for these positions are being given these positions, and those who have worked for it are being abandoned and left aside. This is a problem with leadership. So you are right earlier when you said it's not just about being young, and I'd like to touch that topic. Let's not shy away from reality. It's not about being young. 
Yes, there are some governors or some leaders that are young that are not performing. But yes, there are other leaders and governors that are young that are doing tremendously well. But what we should look at is the average. Don't pick one example and pour everything on that example. Look at the average of old people in office. How many people are actually old in office? How many are performing? 80% of the older people in office, X, failure. But you cannot say that about 80% of young people in office. Okay. It's about statistics. So if you put more young people, and the empirical data will prove that the younger people will succeed. Look at this station right now. Look at the two of you. You are indicative of the young people. You're well-spoken. You're doing very well. Nigeria should be proud of you. But how have our leaders empowered you? How have our leaders projected your growth? How have they created opportunities for you to flourish? But after a certain period of time, you would give up. You would be tired. You would say, ah, Nigeria sells. But it is not Nigeria. It is the quality of people we allow in leadership positions. Okay. Look at Kaduna, for example. Look at the insecurity, for example. Look at what is going on in the, in, on the expressway. With, with the insecurity there, right? We should be focused on security. I will tell you that the only country, and I know why there's insecurity in Kaduna, because the only state in Nigeria that has figured out the formula of infusing young people and older people is Kaduna State. Anybody that has gone to Kaduna State and seen the infrastructural development, have seen the young people in office, you have 20 something year olds, you have 30 something year olds, you have mayors, you have new positions, you have things that have given them the opportunity to flourish. I believe that if you have that Kaduna model around Nigeria, with over 50% of the people in office representing young people having capacity, then they will do well. So it is not about just young people. We're not saying no young people. No, we are seeing quality young people. I believe that together with other young people, this is why the progressive youth movement has come about. The progressive youth movement is about patriotic Nigerians, young Nigerians who were born into the country Nigeria, who knows the value, who loved Nigeria when Nigeria was Nigeria. I'll tell you something else, right? And I digress. But today, I listened to the speech of the Honorable Minister of Information. And in his speech, he said, these are tales by moonlight. You see, I'm the last breed of young people who know what that means, tales by moonlight. Majority of the young people today don't know what tales by moonlight is. So right there, in that statement, there is a disconnect. Tales by Moonlight was a show when we were tiny babies that they used to say, this is what he's referencing today. But how many young people know Tales by Moonlight? I do. So this is what I'm trying to say. There's a complete disconnect between the older generation and the younger generation that they are trying to lead. And we are that bridge. If we, more young people, in this age bracket are not involved in leadership and Nigeria cannot get out of the quagmire it's in today. The APC cannot get out of the quagmire it's in today. And the fault is our fault. Where have we been? Why have we been quiet? If you look at the great leaders of old, name them. All right, uh, we seem to have uh, some disconnection issue. Out there, but he has indeed said a whole lot concerning uh, how Nigerians are need to young Nigerians need to actually get involved. I think we have uh, Prince Aldo back. Uh, let me try and get one uh, question to you right now. I know the APC is actually enmeshed in a lot of um, controversies right now. Uh, my colleague rightly said about 12th state, but with all of this and um, plans of um, 
parallel uh, congresses. Don't you think it would actually be like the party shooting itself uh, in the leg and them exposing itself, knowing that um, all other parties, opposition that is, may want to peek on all of these um, bottlenecks within your party and uh, maybe use that against you? I honestly don't believe so. Like I said earlier, I honestly believe APC come 2023 is going to win with landslide victory legitimately. And the reason that the APC will win a landslide victory legitimately is simply because young people were involved. A lot of new young faces are going to emerge. You cannot make eggs, with, you cannot make scrambled eggs without breaking a few eggs. That's the truth. You cannot make an omelette, sorry, without breaking a few eggs. It's all possible. So all we are doing is going through the process of internal democracy. As young people, it's time for us to come together as a block, understand our power, understand who we are. This is why the governors, I tell you, look at all the complaints and issues you've heard about the APC in the last year and a half, 18 months since the CCPC was formed. They never reacted to anybody. But 24 hours after young people came together and said we were declaring our convention in February, the governors, 20 of the governors came together and decided to do the convention in February. Why? Because they know that we are the strongest members of the party. They know that we have begun to realize our power in numbers. They know that if they do not take decisive action, as young people will realize that as the real stakeholders, the power belongs to the people. Because guess what? It's not who registers the political party that owns it. Because you must have a minimum number of people to be a political party. What does that mean? That minimum number of people are the shareholders, the stakeholders in the party. Right now, our number is 35 million out of 40 million. I'll let you do the math and tell us what percentage we occupy and that, tell us that's what percentage over 80%. of office. If that's some cherry news um, print out, though, and I actually think it is a good development that um, the young people are actually coming out to, you know, re-validate uh, themselves and also re-register re to be part of um, whatever political parties they may be interested in. But um, how do you, as the progressives and um, youth now, uh, push it beyond registration? Because most times, from what we've seen in previous elections, um, the youth, they do lots of activism on um, social media. But when it comes to the election day proper, they would not find as much youth as possible, see more of the elderly and, of course, women come out on mass to vote. Um, our membership drive has been running since Mr. President commissioned us in, in February. I believe, uh, sorry, January, I believe we're about 9.2 registered members right now to the progressive youth movement. And we're growing and we're beginning to understand that as young stakeholders, if we hold ourselves accountable, in the 774 local governments, we have representatives, they've been communicating with each other, and they understand that now is the time. They need us. They need us for the electioneering process. Look at it, they sit in the office, they know that what we lack is the resources. But guess what? I'll give you an example. Nigeria. All right, yet again, uh, we seem to have some sort of disconnect uh, there with um, Prince um, Aude. But it has been some interesting conversation because I am young and I am actually always um, you know, captivated when uh, issues of young people are brought to the fore. Indeed, we need to make ourselves more visible and more, you know, activated when it comes to handling the, the decision-making process. No, 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 before me, I'm looking at the fact that, you know, uh, this is the APC, the ruling party, 2023 mm. is here. Mm. And uh, the fact that are, if, it feels like, you know, up until this moment, there's no convention for them. Uh, like you rightly mentioned, this, th this, are not, th this would not be added as a plus to them. And, uh, you know, with all of the confusion that is actually ongoing, uh, you know, in the different parties. I'm thinking that uh, with this coming up, as much as it's a good thing to say, yes, we're asking for involvement, uh, mm. you know, youth involvement at the party level. We want key political position. Like we will always say, dialogue is what it is. It's not like I'm actually trying to be, you know, mm. an advocate or spokesperson of the APC right now. Yes. But one would expect that um, we should actually always find, you know, a better approach, you know, to solve this. But like you rightly mentioned, it could just be you know putting out it feels like this is further dividing the party uh over and over yeah. again with all of this that's ongoing 
All right, I don't understand if we have um, Aldo back. All right, um, Aldo, let's just get your words, uh, your final words on this as we wrap up the show. We disconnected in just a few seconds. I'll just wrap up all your thoughts, uh, your advice for the young people in as much as uh, there are you know, skirmishes within your party. What are you saying to them as we wrap up? Um, I'll just answer what she just mentioned before I wrap up. Yeah, Basically, on. she's correct. Dialogue is the way forward. Mm. But we have leaders that right now we do not trust. The only person we trust is the president. So the only person that we're willing to dialogue with as young people is President Muhammadu Buhari, because if he gives us his word that this, this is what is in it for young people, then we believe he'll keep to it. So my final word to young people is take an example from what we've done. Everyone had an issue with the APC and the CCPC. All the factions that were there did so many things, but they never reacted. The only time they reacted was when young people came together to say they were holding their convention and they reacted 24 hours after. It shows you something. We have the powers. Let us stop being like a desica about the task at hand. Let us be, stop being lazy about the task at hand. Let us get involved. Let us come together and understand that the only way to real leadership is through political parties. There is no third force political party. The third force is young people. We right. are that third force. So let us come together and negotiate something for us, a way forward for young people, and build a better Nigeria, a Nigeria we can be proud of. All right, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Uh, we have indeed been speaking with Prince uh, Mustafa Aldo, a former governorship aspirant in Kogi State, of course, the leader of the Progressive uh, Youth Movement of the APC. Indeed, we've been looking at uh, political participation from the young people and, of course, your call for the resignation of um, the APC, uh, CPC uh, leadership, I mean, Mala Bodhi. Well, that's so much we can take at this point in time. Uh, we hope you actually enjoyed the conversation. We will definitely return tomorrow. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, that's all right. To follow us on Facebook and Instagram is at Class TV Africa. And on YouTube is at Class TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bobo. Do have a great morning. And I'm Justin at Academy. Stand by for the news momentarily.